everyone. Welcome to the Discovering LGBT Identities and Communities panel. I love it. It looks like we have an awesome audience. I know for a fact we have some amazing panelists. Uh, my name is Ashley Mardell and I'll be your... I may have bribed the audience to cheer for me. Uh, <laughs> um, so before we dive into our conversation, I want to talk for a few minutes about how excited I am for these next 60 minutes. Um, I really believe that this panel has the potential to be super different than any LGBT panel that has happened at VidCon in the past. And the reason that I feel this way is because this is VidCon's first year implementing the creator track, which is super cool. So that means, like, wrap your mind around this. For the first time, we are having this panel, and we're going to be talking about these issues in a room where every single seat is filled with someone who has a channel or contributes in YouTube in some way. And I think that's excellent. I think that's going to change the dynamic of the conversation. Yeah, woo! Yeah. <laughs> and we'll be able to skip a lot of surface level stuff and get down to issues that creators really care about. And frankly, I'm just honored and excited to be a part of that. So let's get into it. We'll start with intros. Um, when VidCon asked me to moderate this panel, they encouraged me to introduce each of the panelists. But I like to break the rules, and I don't want to do that. So, um, <laughs> um, and the reason I don't want to do that is because I'm going to be asking these guys to share some labels and some qualifiers that they identify with. And a lot of times, these labels can be really personal. And I just don't want to mislabel or misrepresent them in any kind of way. Uh, I want them to own their identity, and I want them to own their identity in front of you guys. So I'm going to ha be having each of you introduce yourselves. And what I'd like you to share with the audience is first, your name, then your pronouns, how you identify within the LGBTQ plus community, and then like a sentence about your channel. I know it's a long list. So if you need me to uh, remind you, I can. We'll start with Davey. Ah, because I'm closest to you. I have to go first. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, my name is Davey Wavy, and pronouns uh, he and his and uh, I identify as gay, and my channel is pretty much uh, all gay all the time. <laughs> yes. yes, oh, um, I am Heartbeat. <laughs> uh, I identify as she and her, okay? Uh, I am a lesbian in the community, but sometimes I be feeling pansexual, like for real, for real, because I just love people so much. <laughs> <Woo>! <laughs> I identify as a lesbian because I see myself with a woman for the rest of my life, but that's why I identify. And on my channel, you will find a big black lesbian idiot. All right. Okay. Just so you know. Hi, I'm Lucas Cruikshank. Um, I identify as he and his. I'm gay. And my channel is just a bunch of fun, random things. I don't really have a set structure, but it's good. <laughs> yes. Um, hi, I'm Skylar Kurgel or Skylark11. I identify as a pansexual, transgender dude, I guess. And um, I guess uh, my pronouns are he and him. And my channel is mostly documenting my transition from female to male starting in 2009. But then it's also involving my cat. <laughs> Sweet. Yes. I just want to say, please give it up for him because this, I believe this is the first time yes. we have a FTM. FTM? Yep. <laughs> I, just, I always mess up the acronyms on a VidCon panel. So please give it. Give it up. Awesome, guys. So now that we've gotten to know a little bit more about you, let's get to know about your channels a bit. So you're obviously all up here because you're considered LGBTQ YouTubers, but I think everyone in the room knows that there's more to you than just your sexuality and your gender identity. So my question for you is, how do you decide how much of a role your sexuality plays in the content you put on your channel? So for example, do you ever feel pressured to vlog about LGBTQ things because uh, you're a role model and that's what people expect? Or on the flip side, are you ever like hesitant to vlog about gay things because you're worried people might only see you as gay? And anyone can chime in. Uh, me? Uh, when I first started, I felt um, responsible, especially in the black lesbian community, to really push my gayness in those videos. <laughs> like, hey, rainbows all the way, bitch. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay, <laughs> like, you know? But later on down the line, I learned that I just want to be human of all things. Like, I'm getting older. Like, 
everyone needs to pay bills, everyone needs to work hard, everyone needs to uh, be the best person they can be. And sometimes I feel like my um, sexuality is now in the background because I just want to be the best me possible. I don't want to be the best lesbian possible, I just want to be me. So yeah, it does like have some type of uh, effect on my channel now because I don't really talk as much about gay issues, I talk more about life right. and self-acceptance. So do you ever feel like when you, t when, you, when you steer away from those LGBTQ plus issues, um, you're letting your audience down at all because that's what they like to hear? Or do you don't feel that way at all? No, because I still crack lesbian ass jokes. Like, <laughs> we're... <laughs> Oh, I, I swear a lot. I'm so sorry if you have children in the audience, but <laughs> I just came from a place where I couldn't swear, and I have a lot of things to, to let out. <laughs> but yeah, no, I never feel like I'm letting my audience down by not speaking on it. I will, you know, I'll do a live show, and then, you know, 15-year-olds will come up to me, I think I'm gay, I'm like, can you please graduate high school? <laughs> um, <laughs> but, you know, like, I'll ask, uh, I'll answer whatever question anyone has to try and find that self-discovery that everyone's always looking for. It's a lifetime journey. Awesome. Uh, Lucas, how about you? Because I know that your channel definitely has more of a focus on comedy. So do you yeah. ever feel... Um, well, I, I'm, on my channel, I actually didn't come out until I made like 30 videos. So, But um, nothing really changed after I came out other than that I could open up my talking about my life experiences completely truthfully, which was really awesome to be able to do that. But um, I guess I don't really, I don't really think like, am I making like a gay content or that sort of thing? Like, if I'm, if I want to tell my coming out story, if I want to do a video about a certain thing, I don't really think about it. But I just sort of do what I feel natural and what I'm interested in talking about and what I think my viewers would be interested in. Sure, watching. perfect. And I think that's absolutely what your channel should be—just a reflection of you. Yeah. Um, what about you, Sky? Yeah. Um. So. I would say that although a lot of my content revolves around me being trans, um, I really, like, that is just one aspect. You know, like Hart said, like, my biggest thing is I want to be, like, the best me that I can be. And uh, for the people that watch my videos, like, as long as they see me striving towards that, it doesn't matter if I'm talking about, like, oh, I made out with a guy, or oh, here's my transition, and here's me, you know, things like that. They seem to just want to see me continuing on the path to happiness. So I don't feel like I let them down. Yeah, and you have a lot of music on your channel, which is fantastic. I love yeah, that. Yeah, no one really pays attention to my music on my channel. I do. And then, Davey, everything you do is gay. Uh. Everything's yeah. gay. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. Guilty. Um, you know, I think like there's people like Lucas that are funny. There's people that are musicians. There's people that can dance or that do cooking channels because that's what they're good at. I don't really have any of those talents. The only thing that I'm good at, I guess, is being gay. So, <laughs> so, so and that's, fitness. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a little bit of that. Um, so, and also, like, it feels like, like, I can't, I can't ask my mom and dad about, uh, butt plugs. Like, they're great, they're awesome, but they're straight, and they don't have, they don't have the same point of reference. And so, there's kind of this, it feels like there's, there's, like, a vacuum of knowledge that's not being passed down from one generation to another. Uh, and so, I kind of think as my channel is a way to, to help kind of facilitate that. So, yeah. Definitely, absolutely. Um, so let's talk about this year on YouTube, because this was a huge year for coming out on YouTube. Yeah, I know, right? Wow. Woo! Woo! We had so many large creators come out. We had Connor Franta, Joey Graceffa, Ingrid Nielsen, just a couple weeks ago, Shane Dawson. Um, and all of this was really exciting, but it kind of sparked a dialogue amongst the creators regarding whether or not large influencers have a responsibility sort of to come out because on one hand uh, when a large influencer comes out obviously it provides a massive amount of positive exposure to the LGBTQ plus community but on the other hand coming out is super personal so what are your guys's thoughts on whether or not um, celebrities have sort of a responsibility to come out um. I had felt some way about this like a couple weeks ago, but after talking to everybody personally, I understand why they're deciding to do it, um, to educate their audience that uh, they, again, wanting to be a better them. Um, but it, even though it's a good time to come out, uh, it's also a really good time of acceptance. So when you come out and make a YouTube video, you know you're gonna get a sympathetic reaction. You know that people are going to um, look up to you in some way, shape, or form, you know? So, like, I don't know, like, if you just want to do it, I say that just do it, whatever. Like, there's no problem with that. I don't care if you want to come out as a turkey baster. Like, 
was, mom, dad, I'm a turkey baster, all right? <laughs> like, <laughs> whatever you feel, you, whatever you feel you need to do to uh, create a better you, why not? Like, it doesn't matter how many followers you have, it doesn't matter if you only have one friend and your one friend is like, really? I didn't think that, <laughs> you know? But yeah, that's how I feel about it. Like, go for it, it doesn't really matter to me. I'll say though that I think um, it isn't all sunshine and roses when people come out there it's not always just support and oftentimes um, some of the people that are most critical are people from within our own community mm -hmm. um, Absolutely. that we yeah. need to be there when those people come out and because um, you, you see the criticism coming even from within other LGBT uh, content creators but we need to be there to support each other because it's a very personal decision and it's not easy to come out. Oh yeah, it's something that you definitely do not have to do. Yeah. You know, I know 50 year old people who are like, I'm in the closet and it's great. <laughs> because they don't, that's just what makes them feel comfortable. But yeah, it's not this thing that you have to do. It's not this mm -hmm. thing that you have to know by a certain age. It's not this thing that everyone really needs to know. It really comes down to how you want to, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, it really comes down to how you want to perceive yourself to the world. Yeah. I don't That's think awesome. everyone, like, some people don't want to share things about their relationships on their videos. So, I mean, it goes, some people aren't going to want to share their orientation, and that's fine. I mean, it's just a personal decision, and I don't think anyone should ever feel pressured to come out just because it, it's a year for coming out. It should just be if they're comfortable, but, yeah. Absolutely, definitely, I agree. Um, when I think about my situation on coming out, um, I remember that I felt sort of a slight social responsibility to come out because um, I'd been making videos for so long and I came out to my friends and my family and I hinted about LGBTQ things so much on my channel. I wasn't totally out, but everyone kind of knew that I was out. And we live in such a progressive area, uh, era that I was pretty confident that I'd be accepted. So kind of the so social responsibility that I felt was, well, if it's going to go well, and if everyone's going to support me, like why not? Otherwise I could really miss this opportunity to um, be a positive role model for all the people who are watching me. Because when I came out, not a lot of people were watching me, but it was around 20,000, and to me that was a big number then. So, um, and I, I really think it's important to understand the difference between like just the small urge for a, like, a social responsibility and an obligation. Obviously if I didn't want to come out, I didn't have to, that's my prerogative, but I was, it was kind of like, hey, why not? And if there's like a lot of why nots, I was like, I think I'm going to go for it. Wait, can I just say something? Because that was beautiful. Oh. Um, <laughs> so actually, I came out on YouTube. Like, I started my first video as, as hey, this is day one on testosterone. I'm an Obama baby. Yay. And <laughs> <laughs> basically, that's what I said. It was, I was awful. And um, anyway, though, it's funny because I ended up going to college about a year later and chose to live stealth, meaning I didn't tell people that I was transgender. And it was actually through my YouTube channel and through the community on YouTube that within six months, I started coming out. I was like, no, you know, like, I feel like supported online and I feel like I can do this. So it's funny because YouTube uh, helped me feel like kind of a responsibility to come out to my physical peers and that was the best moment of my life almost. Awesome. awesome. That's really exciting. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> He's so cute, y'all. Like, I know. I can't just I have to say it. See? Projecting. He's cute. I said it. Okay. Uh -huh. Go ahead. Beautiful. All right. Um, this guy is cute, though. I agree. Um, <laughs> all right. Let's move on to my favorite question of the panel. We're going to talk about diversity for a little bit. Um, while LGBT representation in the media has definitely become more diverse in the past, we still have a lot of room for improvement, obviously. So take this panel, for instance. We only have one person of color. Uh, we only have one person of trans experience. Um, we don't have anyone who identifies as asexual or gender fluid or agender. So there's still, like, a lot of gaps to fill. My question for you guys is, how can YouTubers raise awareness of underrepresented identities, and what identities would you like to see have increased representation? Uh, I, re I really want to see more black lesbians on YouTube. Like that's a, that's a personal goal. And I have, they're, they're <laughs> it, the crazy thing is, is when I started, I was looking for a black lesbian community. Cause when I was growing up, I was in a, like a big melting pot of people who came from LA and wanted to move out the hood. 
and <laughs> came to the suburbs and it, we just all like talked the way we are. So we had Hispanic, we had black, we had white, we had um, different types of people. But, and when I was discovering that I was gay, I thought I had to hang out with a particular type of people. And I didn't know why I, there were no like other black lesbians in my town. So I went on YouTube and discovered that there's a lot of them, like a lot, <laughs> like a lot of them. And they do not get represented well at all. A lot of them are, really, are my really good friends. They don't get invited to events like this. They, there just needs to be more of it, but that's a personal goal. You know, like there's, there needs to be more trans, there needs to be, you know, more diverse representation. And the only way we can do that is by saying something, y'all. Like we're all creators. If you're straight and an ally, just say it, dude. You're gonna have backers like ready to support you. Like, yes, gay people. <laughs> hey, yeah. Good. Heart for president. Hey. <laughs> I personally would love to see more um, trans women of color, um, but I can, part of me can understand a bit about why that representation isn't physically present at VidCon because there's actually very little representation on YouTube because the world is a scary place for trans women mm -hmm. and for trans women of color, and I don't like that, but I can understand why they can't, sometimes can't even feel comfortable being on YouTube. It can't even be safe for them because if their neighbor finds out, they're gone. I mean, there was just a trans woman murdered, stabbed fatally the other day, a trans woman of color. It's just, it's blowing my mind and it needs to change. And like, the only way I can say is like, hey, there are trans women and lots of trans women of color that you are not gonna see on panels, but love them. Just like so much love for them because they need to be up here too. Yeah. So I'll also say, I think that as, as creators that have an audience, we have a responsibility to use our platform to give underrepresented um, creators a, uh, a voice and to kind of promote them. Um, and that's something that, that we can do to help elevate those people. So those people that are brave enough to speak out and to create channels, we can help make sure that more eyeballs get on them. I absolutely 100% agree. Uh, agree. Um, and so this kind of is a perfect segue to my follow-up question. What have any of you, or what are some things you've done on your channels to um, spotlight underrepresented identities? Kind of like you're talking about. Have you done anything where you've brought in uh, trans-identifying individuals? Yeah. So I just did. I just did a, um, a life cycle ride from San Francisco to LA with a transgender YouTuber, Julie Vu. Um, who Princess Jules, who you guys might might follow, who's awesome, um, and and I think for me, like at least personally with my content, it's uh, this year has been less about me and what I have to say, and more about using my platform for for other people. Uh, I just did a video with Brendan Jordan, who you know blurs the the gender queer line. Say hi, say hi. <laughs> <laughs> He's waving. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and, and, and making people have discussions about you know, what gender means and um, about people's identities. And uh, I think it's great. I think it's great to have the conversation. Wonderful, anybody else? I love what you're doing with the channel, Davey, by doing that. And I think I haven't done that, but I love hearing you guys talk and learning more about how we can help this. And I'm totally, I wanna do that in the future. Uh, one look, one thing that I make sure I try and do constantly is I, I go, I, I stalk my followers like crazy. <laughs> and I'll go to someone's Twitter randomly and see if they have a YouTube link on their Twitter account. I'll click on it and be like, what? You only have 100 subscribers? What is this? You know what I'm saying? And just feel so passionate and just start promoting them as I go along. And if, I, if they have a video on their channel that I really like, I'll try and share it to get them that boost. It gives them that motivation and confidence. One prime example is uh, two years ago, I found a two mom family on YouTube. Um, they're called Olivia Has Two Moms. <laughs> <laughs> And I made a whole video centering about me wanting to be a mom and what it's going to be like when Hart decides to have kids because I don't think I'm gonna be a really good mom. My kids are gonna hate me, okay? <laughs> <laughs> and um, I shouted them out at the end of that video. Um, at the time, I believe they had 2,000 subscribers. In a week, they shot up to 10,000 subscribers. Nice. In a week. <laughs> yeah, give it up to them. <laughs> they're they're back here. there. They're, please stand up, oh, Ebony and Denise. Olivia, two moms. <laughs> 
Yes, and ever since that, we are now best friends. They are now my mothers, and we have, we, 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 they just, I love them so much. I love you guys so much. Thank you for coming. Thank you. <laughs> No, I love that. And I think what you guys are doing on your channel is really important. Um, and I love that you're bringing people of different identities onto your channel rather than simply just educating your audience by yourself. I think that a lot of times um, there's a fine line between advocating for a group that you don't identify and speaking over them. So when you bring somebody onto your channel, you're definitely, you're, you're not speaking over them anymore. You're bringing them onto your channel uh, and you're letting them use your platform to speak for themselves. Sky and I actually recently did a collab. Um, I wanted to talk about gender, but as a mostly cis person, I was really uncomfortable about that at first. I was like, is this my place to talk about gender? Am I like 110% educated? Um, like, should I leave this to people who um, feel more strong in their non-binary identity? So the way that I like kind of navigated those feelings was by inviting Sky onto my channel, and I believe also like 14 other non-binary people onto my channel in one massive video. And it, it was really fantastic, because a lot of people um, learned on my channel, not even from me, just from other people I brought on, but it was wonderful. Um, beautiful. Uh, now that we've talked a little about gender, let's talk some more about gender. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I feel like oftentimes when we have conversations about LGBTQ plus issues, um, on panels like these, we really tend to focus on sexual orientation, and gender kind of gets either brushed aside or lumped into sexual orientation, and they're actually two very different things. Um, I think this was kind of highlighted during Caitlyn Jenner's coming out. Her transition seemed to be the first time in a long while that trans issues leaked in the mainstream media, um, and for the first time, a lot of people started thinking and questioning they, the way they view gender. So what I'm wondering for you guys is, why is it important that we uh, get people talking and learning about gender? And as content creators, how can we further the discussion of gender online? Well, I think uh, first um, is that it was hard for me to figure out what my sexual orientation was because you know, a lesbian is a woman who likes women, a gay man is a man you know, who likes other men, but I didn't know, am I a woman, am I a man? Like, how could I define my orientation? So thinking about my gender came first and foremost. I was like, all right, I'm just gonna love who I love, but I also gotta love myself. This is gonna take a little bit of time. So that's how I sort of navigate it. And so I think that in order for you to really know your sexual orientation, it means that you know your gender and it's an important thing to talk about, that discovery. Yeah, yeah for years, like, by the time I was two, um, my mom tried so hard to get me in dresses, <laughs> and it just would not work out, and she didn't understand the reason why, um, that I just really didn't like being feminine. I didn't like being feminine at all at such a late age, right? So she, her fear was she was going to lose a baby girl. She thought I was going to transition. She thought I, I wanted to be a boy, and she didn't understand that, but now... Um, Getting older, um, bringing my first girlfriend to a Thanksgiving dinner with no warning. Um, <laughs> um, and just, I, you know, I actually really never really came out to my family. They were like, man, we knew, but okay, we'll, we'll run with it, okay, you know? But um, after having that conversation with my mom, like, no, I don't, I don't want to be a man. I love my body parts. I love having a vagina so much. Um, <laughs> I love my anatomy. I love... Um, I just love being a woman. Like, I love being a powerful woman. Not like I'm like powerful than y'all, but like an uplifting one who can spread a good message to people because there's not enough of that in the media either. Powerful women, you know what I'm saying? But yeah, like, <laughs> sorry, like, um, heart for president again. I'm just getting very, <laughs> very passionate and I'm, I'm sorry. But yeah, no, like once I talked to my mom about that, she completely understood and now it's like this thing that, everyone understands in my family. Okay, so, all right, you like girls, but you gonna stay a girl, that's good, that's what's up. But you gotta, and I, I know I'm rambling, but my, my, <laughs> my trans friend, Sky, <laughs> uh, uh, FTM, is in the back, he's in the audience right now, and he has taught me so much <laughs> that I just, I just have to, I just want to shout everybody out. Um, Latif in the, <laughs> BET special, like what's good, all right? Pharrell Williams coming at you, follow me on Twitter. Okay, sorry, but yeah, you, you guys get what I'm trying to say. Sorry, I'm rambling so much, but yeah, yeah. Anyone else? 
You guys didn't have to make it awkward. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that was unnecessary, okay? But I still love you. All right. Wonderful. Um, I think a lot of cis people sometimes struggle with how they can further the discussion of gender online just because they wonder um, how it applies to them and if they fit in in the conversation. So something that I found as a mostly cis person is if you want to get people talking about gender, um, you can talk about gender expression. That's somebody that that's something that every everybody has and can relate to. So, for example, I identify uh, as a woman, but I don't. I'm not traditionally, you know, expressing like a woman at this moment. So, making a video about that is really valuable. And then you can like have a discussion on your channel about like what like girls' clothes are and what boys' clothes are and how we can like break those barriers. And even like. Um, even a video like that is not necessarily about gender, it's about gender expression and clothing, but it's still furthering the discussion on gender. Um, so beautiful. Um, moving on to the next question. Oh, another one of my favorite questions. Every one of my questions is one of my favorite questions. <laughs> um, like I said before, this is a big year for coming out on YouTube. But um, beyond just coming out, and more specifically, this was a big year for coming out on YouTube as bisexual, which is super cool. Yeah. Yes. And I just think that's fantastic, because so often when we talk about LGBT things, uh, obviously the L and the G are really focused on. And sometimes the B gets brushed aside. Uh, what I'm wondering is, how do you guys, how can you combat bi erasure? both online as well as just in everyday life. Yeah, I, I think it's interesting that people treat like bi, they always say a lot of uh, gay men will say uh, bi now, gay later. And this becomes kind of this like supposed to be funny talking point. And it actually, it does a lot of harm. And it's like just because you yourself might not identify as bisexual doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. I don't know why people have, it's like I, I have never been to New Zealand but people have been to New Zealand, and, and I know it exists, <laughs> even though I've never been there. I, you know, I don't have to have that personal experience. You know, it is, it's not the fucking tooth fairy, like, you know, <laughs> it's a real thing. Um, and so for me, it's, it's uh, I identify as gay, I'm not bisexual, but uh, through my videos, I can do what I can to acknowledge it and to further that, that conversation. Um, and not feed into that mentality. And I think that as, uh, as gay people, we can also uh, be mindful of, uh, because there are some, some gay people that feel like as they come out, it's easier to say that they're bisexual because it's like one foot in, one foot out, to really be mindful of that and, and if that's really the smartest thing to do because you don't want to trivialize someone else's uh, sexual orientation, so. Absolutely. He said it so good, I don't even know what to add in. <laughs> Honestly, but no, like, I'm just so proud of bi people finally realizing like, yo, this is a thing and you can be that thing. Like, what's wrong with it? Anybody who tells them differently, it's like, in my family, I don't know, we would joke about a lot of things and a lot of men in my family would just be like, nah, if you, if you, you know, you like penis, then you just gay, that's it. You can't go back and forth. Man, <laughs> you know what's wrong about that is that I could go steal your man and your girl, okay? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> You guys gotta stop making it awkward. <laughs> stop. Hart makes a funny joke. Oh, okay, hey. Help me out here, bro. Okay, that was go. a good one. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Cool. So I kissed a boy for the first time since I transitioned about uh, six months ago in November. Ooh, was his lips off? Oh, sorry. No, you know what, the first thing I know, so I always thought, okay, it was easier when I came out to be like, okay, I'm a straight man, everyone gets it, all right, that's easy, and then that was kind of silly of me. I ended up uh, resolving that as I became comfortable with myself, and I was like, wait, like, I'm dating these straight girls, and then they're becoming, like, queer and open-minded because I'm educating them, and this is awesome, and then I'm like, why am I not being open-minded? Like, how do I know that she, you know, identifies as a she? I'm just seeing her from afar, or them from afar, and you're beautiful, and I want to be with you, like, 
So I've been discovering that. And so when I kissed this person, actually they kissed me, or he kissed me, I was like, your head is so big. It's like a horse. And like, I really, really hope he's not here and that he's not watching this. But like, I was just like, what? And he's kind of a small guy. I was like, what am I doing? Like, oh my goodness. So I ended up going back to my mom and I was like, mom, I kissed a boy and I liked it. And uh, maybe, you know, I'm pansexual, like primarily attracted to femininity. And I just like to just put it out there all the time. So I kissed a boy and I liked it this year, okay? <laughs> I think that's fantastic. So, <laughs> I really like that. I'm um, so in love with her segues. <laughs> thank you. Um, so, we live in a time right now where social justice is really trendy. That's just a reality. Um, and it's not a bad thing. I love it. I have a Tumblr. I like my Tumblr. Um, but it can make talking about potentially controversial things and touchy things like LGBTQ issues kind of intimidating sometimes, especially when you're worried about somebody in the comments calling you out of being problematic or not like 110% educated. So my questions for you guys is, have you ever made a mistake on YouTube? Maybe misrepresented or misspoke about the LGBT community in some way? And if so, what happened and how did you handle it? Ooh. I say stupid shit all the time. <laughs> <laughs> And, you know, I, it's, me too. <laughs> you know, it's just because someone has a big audience doesn't mean they're always going to say the right things. Um, I do think that there's a responsibility um, to get as educated as possible. And if it's something that you're not comfortable speaking on, bring in someone else that can, um, that is more informed. Uh, and when you, when you do mess up, like, you know, we all say things that, that you know, aren't always the wisest. Um, to uh, be smart enough to, to take it back and, and correct yourself. Um, I don't think that's a sign of weakness. I think that's, that's how we grow and, and we evolve. So uh, I've, I've said a lot of stupid crap, and when I do, I, I, I try to the best of my ability to, uh, to you know, point out uh, a, a better truth and, uh, and share that. I love that. And delete the video. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I... I know you're all perfect, so it's hard. <laughs> I'm yeah. sure I have. I don't know. I can't think of like an ex a specific example, but I think it's just amazing on YouTube seeing all these different people and how everyone's just becoming more visible because everyone has access to the internet and just feeling like I become more educated watching your guys' videos and it's a good thing and I feel like it's cool how everyone can access that. So you, you can get educated if you want to. Definitely. My, my subscribers, I, I ask a random question every single, at the end of every single one of my videos, and they teach me so much when I ask that question, and it'd be something so silly, like, uh, what day is trash day at your house, or something, and then they'll just put a unique answer that has nothing, that has everything to do with the question, but something so unique. Someone will be down there like, man, every day, trash day is Wednesday, and there's this hunk of a man named George. <laughs> he picks up my trash every day, and I love it, because he's in his trousers. Trousers. Like, it's just so random. So when I do a serious topic, they're like super invested in the question that I ask, because now when they're answering the question, people who don't know a lot of what I said are reading the comments and learning learning so much from my audience because everyone's participating and making everybody learn. So yeah, like, I love my audience so much. Oh, if y'all in here, I love you. Um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> we love you, but yeah, that's all I gotta say. I remember I think uh, the video I made that was probably filled with the most mistakes um, was the gender project, the one that I made with Sky. Um, I was really proud of it, and I'm still massively proud with, of it, but um, it turns out that there were probably five or six things um, that I misrepresented, or my guests misrepresented in some kind of way. And I was already worried about putting that video out there, you know, because I, I'm only a mostly cis person speaking, you know, on trans and non-binary and genderqueer things. Um, but it was actually a fantastic experience. Um, thankfully, uh, in the comments section of my audience, um, 
I've cultivated a decently safe space, so instead of being like, you are so uneducated, people just replied like, hey, Ashley, a better way to put that might be X, Y, and Z. Um, and that was so fantastic, and I felt so inspired by learning, because I learned from my audience so much. Um, I made a video on my channel. I posted it probably, I think it's like the second to last video I posted. It's just called I Messed Up. And all it is is focusing on every single uh, like gender education flub I made. And I'm so proud of that video. It's just, it's literally just me being like, I, I didn't know what I was talking about 100%. And I'm just letting you know. Um, and it was a really good experience. My audience was super receptive to it. They were like, I like really respect that you called yourself out on things, that you said you were sorry, that you admitted you were wrong, and then you're going to um, change the way you speak about gender in the future. And it was like a really positive experience. Um, now that we've talked about social justice and being politically correct, um, I thought it would be fun to move on to potentially the most controversial question of the panel. Um, so, <laughs> take a deep breath. Um, but it's a good one. It's a really good one. I know a lot of people are excited for it. Um, so an issue that's been particularly prevalent on YouTube this year is queer baiting. And for those of you on the panel, um, and for those of you in the audience who aren't familiar, Queer baiting is when cis or straight people, or people who have not publicly disclosed their sexuality online, um, use LGBT culture for some kind of gain. So clicks, attention, money, etc. Uh, an example of this might be when a creator posts a video um, with a suggestive like thumbnail or a title, um, kissing someone of the same gender, and like with a title like "My Big Secret," um, and then you go to click the video, and it in fact has nothing to do with anything LGBTQ. Uh, and there's been a lot of buzz about this, about whether this is fine, about whether this is normalizing um, LGBTQ things, whether it's a little disrespectful. So my thoughts are, or my question for you is, what are your thoughts on queer baiting? Well, <laughs> uh, I feel like two different types of way about this. At the same time, I look at YouTube as a p platform of do, post whatever the hell you want. It's your, it's called YouTube. It is the tube of you, you know? <laughs> so, um, but like, I don't mind. Like, some, it's, sometimes I think it's so fun to see like a thumbnail of some girl's chest and then it's like a, a video of a spider. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, it's just a fun video to find when you're in that YouTube black hole. <laughs> like, I, I was on motocross and now all of a sudden I'm on Teletubbies. What, what's going on? <laughs> you know, but at the same time, um, uh, being an activist in the gay community, you can see how disrespectful this actually is because um, not just kids or people just trying to learn more or trying to uh, learn how to accept our community is gonna find this video that's fake and it's never good to just sit there and be a fake ass bitch. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That was my last curse word of the evening, I promise. <laughs> David, do you have any thoughts? So, uh, so queer baiting. Uh, first, I'd like to say the only kind of baiting that I enjoy is masturbating. Um, I'd like to put that out there. Um, I think it's, it's uh, obviously, it, it, uh, queer baiting trivi trivializes uh, uh, you know, coming out and what we experience as LGBT people. That's obvious. Does it suck? Yes. Um, I also think, though, um, the reason that thumbnail works is because it's sensational to see two guys kissing or two girls kissing or whatever it is. And what I would love to see is a world where seeing two guys kissing is not sensational. Um, that that is normal, and that um, you know, I guess uh, that it doesn't work because that's not a thing. And obviously, we're not there. Uh, that's not the world we live in. Um, it is still a thing, and for good reason. You know, it being gay and or LGBT um, determines a lot about how we're going to navigate this world and the laws that we're going to experience and the discrimination that we're going to feel. But what I would love to see, kind of bigger picture, is the power of that being gone. I absolutely agree, and I want to chime in really quick. Um, I like what you had to say, where you wanted to live in a world where there was just um, thumbnails of th same genders kissing, and it was NBD. And um, I want to share a story quick. When I was practicing this panel with my mom, 
Um, that's right. She said something really cute when I asked her. Yes, this. I, Mom. I know. I was like, hey, Janine, let's talk about queer baiting. And she's so cute. She doesn't really know. Um, <laughs> so she said in the Minnesota accent, she said the cutest thing. She was like, oh, well, at least they wouldn't be embarrassed to be gay, huh? And I was like, well, yeah, actually. Actually, that is kind of normalizing it in some way. Um, I'm def I mean, you're definitely exploiting um, the LGBTQ culture for attention, which is bad. But I never thought about it that way, where it's like, before, like instead of making a video where they'd be like, I don't want to be associated with anything LGBTQ at all, it's like, I'm almost more OK hinting that I'm gay, because that's not even the biggest deal. And I was like, oh, mom, that's such a strange perspective. I never, like, <laughs> but you're kind of right. Anyone else have any thoughts? I mean, that, your mom's perspective is really fascinating. <laughs> I've like, never thought of that. That's pretty interesting. I mean, I personally just find that it's a bit misleading. Um, and considering the way that our society is right now, maybe now is not the time to do that. Because I feel like if on my channel, all of a sudden, I like put up some picture of, like, I don't know, like, Davy Wavy shirtless being, like, look at my hot cisgender body. And then you, like, click on it, and it's, like, you know, me. And I'm just, like, flopping around on a beanbag or something. Like, I don't know, I just, I just feel like, oh, like I feel like I'm using like your body and that people are coming for the wrong reason. Like, and I would feel like in a way that's almost like, you know, making fun of you and even, even though I'm not trying to, I would just, I don't know, I just wonder what the intent is behind it. I just can't really see a good intent except for your mom's perspective and also what Hart said about it's YouTube, it's for you. No, definitely. Yeah, the only problem I have with, with it is um, I just imagine like, uh, a young YouTube audience member um, who's closeted and unsure of themselves, and then they really look up to like a YouTuber. Let's pick somebody really random. Let's say like Lizelle, um, and uh, they're confused about themselves. And then all of a sudden, in their subscription feed, they see like Lizelle's big secret, and like you know she's smooching another girl, and they get so excited, and they think like, oh my gosh, like I'm lonely and I'm confused, but I see Lizelle and I love Lizelle, and she's like me. Um, like, like that must make me okay. And then she clicks, and then they, like, uh, the audience member clicks the video, and then immediately that notion is shut down. It's like, oh, you thought I was gay? Never. That couldn't be, and that can just be really damaging. Yeah, uh, can I just say, don't none of y'all go to Glozell trying to <laughs> accept her into the community. It was just an example, okay? No rumors. We are not mean girls. You can sit with us, but don't be catty. <laughs> All right. And you know, all right. <laughs> Wonderful. So as, <laughs> those are my transitions. <laughs> um, as LGBTQ YouTubers, <laughs> uh, we put ourselves in situations where we're obviously very vulnerable and open with our audience. Um, and this can make our audience feel especially connected to us. Uh, for example, I know that my Tumblr box is filled with asks for people asking for coming out advice. Sometimes they tell me about their current and kind of scary homophobic environments that they live in. And sometimes they share some like really heavy things about the current states of their mental health. And that can just like put a lot of pressure in a person and be really overwhelming. My question for you guys is, how do you handle having an audience who feels so connected to you, who feels compelled to open up to you um, the same way that, say, you open up to them in your videos? <laughs> I feel, I mean, I'm, I'm ex I feel happy that they're willing to open up to me and I'm opening up to them, but when it gets to be, like you said, like heavy stuff and things that I personally probably don't, I can't help them with, I don't really know what to do, and it can be a hard thing where you just, you don't, you see a message in your Tumblr box and you don't really know what to do, and there's no guide of what to do, so it, it can be scary, but I don't, so I guess I don't really know what to do. Well, I get a lot of messages in my Tumblr of people, um, you know, expressing their mental illnesses, especially recently because I just did a video uh, kind of announcing that I um, am diagnosed with depression. <laughs> it's kind of, it's surprising, but um, people don't really understand the that the things that depression can cause. People don't understand um, what type of, uh, people don't understand the feelings that you have inside to be able to call this thing depression. Like one day you're up here, you feel like you can do everything, you're on top of the world, and then you, when you open up a book and just start bawling in tears for no reason, and these are feelings that you can't control. So um, what I tell them now is, don't look for me to give you that advice because I could be in my own little situation. Anyone you share it with can be their own, in their own little mental situation. You need to 
uh, ask the right questions to find professional help, to find, um, uh, to seek a doctor, someone to talk to who's outside of your uh, personal bracket because they're professionals. They're, they go to school to study your mind. That's, I think that's like the best option to, uh, is to send people like that. Is to send people, y'all know what I'm saying. Dang, <laughs> done lost my words, but y'all get it. I think one of the, the things that's so great about, uh, about being LGBT on YouTube is that we basically have like a community within a community. And we have kind of a shared vulnerability that is very apparent when you read the comments and um, when you engage with the people who watch, who watch our videos. Um, and I think that when you go to something like VidCon and someone stops you and you know, a bunch of people might just want a selfie and they don't really watch your videos, but they just see the little like yellow tag. But then you meet someone who's like, wow, your videos have really helped me discover who I am. Those, or you get that really touching email, and you know, and I'm sitting there posting an ad on Craigslist for straight guys who have never seen their buttholes for some video that I'm filming, and I can't get it cast. And, and it's like those are the things that get you through that that moment, and that like in the morning when you wake up and you're like, all right, this is why this is why I want to film. Like this gives you a sense of purpose um, and and fulfillment. So I try to, I think we have the best jobs in the world, like doing doing what it is that we do because we in a real way are making an impact on, on, um, on a lot of people's lives in a real way. And I try never to forget that. Definitely. Um. So we're in our last 15 minutes of the conversation. Uh, we're gonna open it up to questions. I know that we have a microphone running around to help. All right. Yeah, awesome. Um, how about right there in the front row? Yeah, you. Oh, it's gotta be on. Hello, oh, there we go. I was like, I have a voice, right? Uh, so you mentioned earlier, you know, about social justice and, and such and one thing that I've noticed a lot, and I mean, like, I, I totally want to be supportive. I'm bisexual, and um, but I'm kind of afraid of even bringing it up because I see this thing happen where if someone says it unkindly or, you know, it's just misinterpreted, uh, suddenly the entire internet is like blasting, you know, his or her or uh, whatever uh, address everywhere, and you know, like let's all go to where they work and get them fired and, and it's just terrible. So, I mean, do you have any uh, guidelines for maybe how to broach stuff like that without it being quite as risky of having that happen to you? <laughs> I don't want to die. Definitely, that totally makes sense. Um, so when I'm going to talk about something that I'm nervous to talk about because it's like controversial or I'm not super educated or something, I try to make sure that I spend some extra time really making sure I'm educated about it. Then I find somebody in the community to kind of like cross-reference those things. Then I'm like, then I did my best. Then I'm solid in myself. And the only thing that I can do is take what I've learned and put it out there in a respectful way. And then you can always close it with a disclaimer. Be like, just so you know, um, I'm new to this information and it's possible um, I misrepresented or misspoke in some kind of way and I'm really open to your criticism. Um, and hopefully by doing that, you receive kind of um, a warm response if you do mess up. And if you don't, if people just come at you, they're silly. You should ignore them. Some people get so <laughs> angry on the internet. Um, so you should ignore anyone that is just like, some people are just always going to be mad. So you know, ignore those people. But those are a few steps you can take to kind of talk about those scary things, if that helps. Uh, to me, I think that, it, oh, can I? Oh, <laughs> uh, to me, I think that comes with the price of like putting your face into the public eye. You're gonna get a, like a super big handful of haters and people trying to knock you down at every single step that you have. But it's uh, I've learned the art of apologizing, not like over apologizing, but like if I say something wrong, I, I remember one time I had said something about having nine to five jobs and people who had like being a YouTuber is a 24 hour job. You know what I'm saying? And we get so much flack because no one looks at our job like it's real because we don't go to an office to go sit down and work and be there nine to five. And they thought that I was knocking down um, people who work nine to fives. It's like, no, I'm doing something that I love to do 
You know what I'm saying? It's my passion. I love doing this. I'm not trying to knock it down. And they took it the wrong way. They calling me out my name, like I can't support Heart no more. I don't want to watch her videos no more. Over some dumb shit, right? You just got to look past it like this. Out of everything I have done on the internet, <laughs> dancing naked in watermelon, this is what you choose <laughs> to be upset about? No. Nah. I ain't got time. So you just put, you You can apologize to them the best way you can, and then if they don't take it, get, go, the door. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay? Yeah. Awesome. Casey. Hi. Um, okay, so my question is, um, uh, there's a lot of talk about gender and on both ends of the spectrum, cisgender and transgender, um, but there's not a whole lot of talk about uh, the people in the middle of the spectrum. And I was wondering if you have resources or advice that you could share for people who identify in the middle of the spectrum or anywhere along the lines in between. Yeah. Um, there's so many gender fluid, agender, genderless, genderqueer, two-spirit people that I found on YouTube just by searching that because as a binary trans person, I don't have that same experience. So I've been looking through the tags, vlogs left and right, and they have such interesting stories, um, such interesting things to say. So that's what I tend to tend to, to send to my fans who are kind of, you know, inside or outside of the spectrum. I'm just like, hey, look at this really awesome video with this really cool person. Maybe you could relate. Um, and that's what I tend to do. But I agree with you. Yeah, we talk about cisgender, we talk about transgender, but there's a lot of people in and outside of that as well. Three channels I can think of off the top of my head that are gender not conforming like that are Milo Stewart, Caitlin Alexander, um, and um, there was another one. It was right there. <laughs> and I'll remember it, and I'll come find you later. Yeah. <laughs> Do you guys want to take a question? Take a person. Uh, oh, um, cute, cute green flag. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, my question is for Lucas. Uh, when you made your coming out video, I just want to say that I was super proud of you as a person and the community as a whole. Um, but it seemed like the media wasn't as constructive with your coming out process as they normally are when a high-profile pro person comes out in the media. Um, what was your experience sort of being under the media microscope after being under that microscope unofficially for so long? Um, I mean, I guess from my experience, like the day I posted the video, I just focused on all the positive media that it attracted. And the positive comments, obviously there was like, there was the other side of it, but I just tried to focus on how people were responding in a positive way, and I was just, I was just happy that people were so accepting. And but yeah, I mean, there was, I guess, like some some YouTubers come out, people are like, oh, we already knew, and that sort of thing. So that's, that's just that's, like, that's just what gay people do. We knew that. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just, yeah. So, but yeah, it was good. I was super happy with it. I'm so thankful for everyone who supported it. Right there. Yes. Hello. Whoa. Um, so my question sort of goes along with like gender, ba like uh, queer baiting. Sorry. And like I was having a conversation at a gathering last night, and the point was brought up that like any representation is good representation. And do you guys agree with that? Do you want to chime in on that? Like, That's what I think my mom was going for. But no, I don't absolutely agree with it. <laughs> um, I think that if you're if you're taking like uh, an oppressed culture and you're using it, you're essentially exploiting it and it's pretty problematic. Anybody else have a thought on that one? Uh, why'd you, no, you had your hand up and then you put it down because you, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like, let me get a lady up in there, but she was okay. like, she was like, hi. <laughs> I'm like, come on, don't Do be I scared. stand? Oh, hello. Okay, so uh, I make uh, YouTube videos, but I've never touched on my sexuality because of my home life. My parents are completely homophobic, and it's terrible. Do you have any advice for someone like me who wants to touch upon this community, but feels like they can because they'll get kicked out? Or have you dealt with homophobic parents or an environment like that where you can't leave home right now? Well, I, I'd say, I mean, obviously that's, that's um, I mean, kudos to you for, for being as brave as you are. And it takes, you know, it, take, it takes a lot of strength. I think 
um, the first priority is always safety, and you need to do what makes you feel safe. Um, if you get to a point where you feel like you're ready, at a certain point, you need to live your life for you and not for your parents. And when you're ready for that, and when you feel safe, and that's your truth, speak it. In the green back there? Well, you all, they both in green. They both got the oh. green. <laughs> yep, you. Hi. Um, uh, this is kind of a wonky question, but um, so I do an international uh, bear collab channel. Uh, and yes. yes, thank you. Yes. And uh, it's, it's men of the den. Uh, men of the den. Uh, and uh, so anyways, I just wanted to talk about like audience engagement and like how you build your audience within the gay community, like the, you know, especially when it's something like niche like that. Like how did you, you know, actively cultivate gay following on YouTube other than just being who you are, which obviously we do. But I mean like, what, what, did, what did you do? How did you, build, how did you build your awesome audiences? I say, ooh, tags is, is a huge part of that. Tagging what you are. Like on my tags, I'm, I, it says like lesbian, black, LGBT, like all these different things. And then every single time someone Googles me or Googles those words, I might pop up with those things. I know I got plenty of friends that be looking for some bears. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like there's um, people out there searching for it. You just gotta really, I think, I just feel like you just gotta know how to tag yourself um, yeah. to be exposed, yeah. <laughs> See, you're doing a good job right now. Yeah. Self-promotion is key. Yeah. Awesome, guys. I just got the signal that we're supposed to wrap it up. But thank you so much for coming out today. I know a lot of us are going to be hanging out afterwards. Let's have a round of applause for the panel. Oh.